Here we're going to be looking at a partnership liquidation where the partnership is terminating its business and distributing its assets. And we're going to look at how we'd apply the marshalling of assets doctrine here. That's what we're going to be looking at, this marshalling of assets here. So what is marshalling of assets here? That's applied when the partnership and or one of the partners is insolvent. So for our example here, we're going to have marshalling of assets for insolvent partners here. So what we're going to have is insolvent partners here. That means that we have partner A and partner B here and their assets are less than the liabilities. So they have greater liabilities than assets here. For partner A, assets of 20,000, liabilities of 26,000. And for partner B, they have assets of 30,000, liabilities here of 36,000. So their liabilities are greater than their assets here. And for the partnership where it's solvent here, again, the partnership itself has assets of 32,000 and liabilities of 18,000. So their assets are greater than their liabilities. So let's go up here and look at our definition here for marshalling of assets and how we'd apply it. Uh, again, it's applied when the partnership and or one of the partners are insolvent here. So number one, the partnership assets first are available for payment of the partnership debts. Any excess assets are available to the payment of individual partners' debts, but only to the extent of the partner's interest in the capital of the partnership. That's what we're going to be looking at here, this uh, interest in the partner, partnership's interest in capital in the partnership. And then number two, personal assets of the partner apply against personal debts ranked in the order of priority here. We're first a ranking here at amounts owed to personal creditors, secondly here amounts owed to partnership creditors, and then thirdly amounts owed to the partners by the way of their uh, capital balance. So if they have a debit capital balance or a deficient capital balance, they would be paying the partnership back there here. So let's go down and look at our example here. We have these insolvent partners here and let's look at partner A first here. They have assets of 20,000, liabilities of 26,000. So the first thing we have to do here is we have to allocate or the amounts owed to the personal creditors here of 26,000 here would have to be subtracted from the total assets available here of 26 a uh, 20,000. So we have unsatisfied personal creditors here for $6,000. We owe the credit our personal creditors here $6,000 for partner A. Now, this is what we we're going to be looking at here for this marshalling of assets here. We have to go to the capital account here for partner A and to see what is in and what's available in the capital account here. And we can only use um, this the unsatisfied personal creditors amount here for the amount that's available in the capital account here. So for partner A, they have $10,000 available here and their liabilities to the personal creditors are $6,000. So we have enough to cover those liabilities here. So we would reduce the capital account here for partner A by $6,000 and that would leave $4,000 in their capital account. So just going up here, here we were able to satisfy the partner's ship's capital of available to the creditors here for $6,000. So we took that and we reduced the capital account here from partner A. So partnership liabilities not satisfied would be zero in this amount here. So there's none, we've satisfied all the liabilities here. So let's go look at partner B. This is another case here where they have assets of 30,000 liabilities here of 36,000. So we have unsatisfied personal creditors. Again, we have amount here of $6,000 that they own to, owed to personal creditors here. Now, this is where, again, we apply the uh, marshalling of assets here. So we have to go down to the capital account here for partner B here. And they have $4,000 sitting in the their capital account here. That's what they have. So uh, using this marshalling of assets uh, doctrine here, we can only, the unsatisfied personal creditors may be attached to partner's interest in the solvent partnership. It's, again, we have this solvent partnership up here, but only to the extent of the partner's capital balance. So they have $4,000 sitting in their capital balance here. And going up to our chart here, they have unsatisfied personal creditors here for $6,000 here. So using this marshalling of assets theory here, uh, we can only use what's sitting in the partner's capital account here, $4,000 to satisfy these personal creditors. So $4,000 is sitting here. Uh, we can only use that amount. So that leaves uh, partnership liabilities not satisfied the difference here of $2,000. So we they could, again, uh, they could only use the unsatisfied personal creditors may 
attach a partner's interest in the solvent partnership, but only to the extent of the partner's capital balance. So they could only use 4,000 of that here to satisfy the unsatisfied personal creditor's amount of 6,000. So that leaves this balance here of um, $2,000 sitting as personal liabilities here uh, to the partnership here. And we can go up to our partnership here and see that their assets are $32,000 and liabilities here $18,000. So just taking the difference here, they have $14,000 worth of assets here sitting there after reducing their liabilities. But again, the, the unsatisfied personal creditors could only go after uh, Partner B's uh, capital amount sitting here. They had only $4,000, so that's all they could go after and that's what they so the liabilities would be not satisfied here the partnership liabilities of two thousand dollars even though they had the positive amount here the partnership was solvent with fourteen thousand dollars worth of assets okay in summary here we're using this marshalling of assets doctrine it's applied when a partnership and or one or more of the partners are insolvent and it determines how the assets are to be distributed in a partnership liquidation here and what we did here is we looked at case one here where we had insolvent partners and the partnership was in, was solvent here and there's also two other cases it would be where the partners are solvent here but we'd have an insolvent partnership and then case three here would be where we have both an insolvent partners and an insolvent partnership here and what we mean by solvency here is where in it's solvent the assets are greater than liabilities and insolvent would be the reverse reverse here where assets are less than liabilities and for our example here uh, we looked at the case one here where we had insolvent partners and the partnership was solvent here and just to review that again all we did is we took the assets here less the personal liabilities and make a note of it the personal liabilities of the partner here and the difference here gives us uh, in this case we had some unsatisfied personal creditors in this case here that was because the uh, liabilities here were greater than the assets here and what we did uh, to determine the uns uh, how much the unsighted unsatisfied personal creditors would get is we look to the capital account here for the particular partner that's where we would be using this marshalling of assets um, doctrine here and we could only use the amount that's sitting in the capital account here to satisfy the uh, uh, personal creditors here so if we had uh, enough in our capital account here we could in this case for partner a here we had ten thousand sitting in the capital account we only needed six thousand so we had enough capital sitting there to satisfy the um, Part of the uh, personal creditors here so we didn't the uh, partnership didn't have any unsatisfied liabilities after that now for partner B it was the opposite here where they had uh, unsatisfied personal creditors here for six thousand dollars but all they had in their capital account here was four thousand dollars so that's all we could apply to uh, the capital available or the partnership capital available to the creditors here it would be four thousand so we ended up with two thousand dollars here of partnership liabilities that were not satisfied and that was based on this uh, marshalling of assets doctrine here where the unsatisfied personal creditors may attach a partner's interest in the solvent partnership here but only to the extent of the partner's capital balance here so that's what we had reviewed in this uh, video here and the we would have to, we will cover case 2 here and case 3 in separate videos